Hey guys, this is Eric with Pixel Rookie, and we're going to be looking at the game Blasphemous, developed by The Game Kitchen. Blasphemous is a game that first showed up on Kickstarter almost two and a half years ago, and at the very first moment I saw this game, I had a feeling that it was going to be really good based on what they were showing. In fact, I've only ever seen one other game on Kickstarter that gave me the same feeling. Yeah, and RimWorld's done pretty well for itself. And when I had the opportunity to get my hands on Blasphemous, my expectations were really high. And boy, were my expectations met. So what exactly is Blasphemous? Looking at the game from a high level, it's a non-linear action platforming game set in an extremely dark religious world with gritty combat, solid platforming, and amazing pixel art. For real though, this is the best looking pixel art game I've ever played, and I don't say that lightly. I am the pixel rookie after all. But good pixel art can only be as good as their animations, and Blasphemous is buttery smooth. It really is a visual treat. They did a great job with the overall presentation of the game, and the effort that was put into it really shows. So the story of Blasphemous goes something like this. A terrible curse has fallen upon the land and all of its inhabitants. Very little is known about this curse, but it's referred to as the Miracle. The Miracles transformed most people into horrific monsters for their blasphemous ways, and now they roam the surrounding lands. I'm sure you can already tell, but this game has twisted religious themes all throughout it. Oh, behold, gracious lady, a visitor. It's kind of like if Berserk's Inquisition arc had a love child with Dante's Inferno and Dark Souls. I'm kidding about the Dark Souls part. Not every 2D game that has challenging combat automatically makes it a Souls-like. Anyways, you play as the main character, the Penitent One, who's the only survivor of a massacre called the Silent Sorrow. The Penitent One is trapped in an endless cycle of death and rebirth, and it's up to him to find out the origins of his anguish and break the curse of the miracle. This guy's such a ruthless and cool character. Never speaking, he wields a sword born from guild itself called Mea Culpa and goes forth into the land vanquishing anything that stands in his path. Oh, and he also has a cool helmet. <coughs> the story starts off vague and mysterious as you're tasked with an initial quest of acquiring three items, but the further you go, the more you learn about the land that was twisted by the miracle. Now that we know a little bit about the game's story, let's talk about what you probably came to this video for. The gameplay. You see, I'm a sucker for 2D action games like Dead Cells and Death Scambit, but I think Blasphemous controls better than all of them. The Penitent One has great mobility, and you can animation cancel attacks into a slide dodge, and it's so smooth and satisfying to play. Between your standard attacks, a solid parrying mechanic, and dodging through enemy attacks, combat felt really smooth, and it feels satisfying going head to head with a bunch of enemies and destroying them all with style. The standard enemies aren't too much of a challenge when you learn their attack patterns, but it was always enjoyable to dispatch them, especially with the random cues to trigger an execution which is overly brutal and really enjoyable to pull off. Not to say that the game's easy. I would say the game's more challenging than most, but it didn't feel too hard either. When you die, your only penalty is that you lose part of your fervor until you find where you died and obtain it back. It's not overly punishing like in some games, and when you die as many times as I did in this game, you can certainly appreciate that. And you can always pay a small price to cleanse your guilt and regain all of your fervor back too, so you're never in danger of being stuck in a bad position. The boss battles prove to be quite difficult, <laughs> but like most action games, once you learn their attack patterns and animations, even the most challenging foe can be bested. And while you only wield Mia Culpa as your only weapon, there's lots of customization options to help provide variety to your gameplay. You can upgrade your sword to unlock more powerful combos, ranged attacks, and more. You obtain prayers that are powerful special abilities that use fervor. You find a variety of rosary beads that can be fitted into your necklace that will slightly empower the penitent one in many different ways. The combat never felt stale as I played through all the different areas in the game and found new upgrades like a breadcrumb trail pushing me further into the twisted land. 
Blasphemous has your standard Metroidvania elements, which opens up a lot of exploration paths early on in the game, and you slowly connect the world together as you advance to different areas that lead back to existing locations, with shortcuts to where you traversed earlier on. There are also NPCs that will give you side quests that can be completed to help empower the Penitent One on his journey with rewards, and even a shopkeeper that sells key items. Some of the quests are quite simple, like bringing healing items to townsmen looking after the wounded, and some of them... well, not so much. Let me ask of you the favor of bringing me a few drops of the oils that once came out of these icy olive trees. Bring you some oil, huh? That should be easy enough. Oh man, here's your stupid oil. I feel the boiling oil entering my frigid veins. I can still answer the call. What? The level design is clever, and some areas were really fun to explore, and you're rewarded for exploration too. You can find hidden rooms that often provide upgrades to your weapon, health, or fervor. While the combat is very satisfying and still provides a challenge, I honestly felt like the platforming elements gave me the hardest time and was the biggest cause of my deaths outside of the harder boss fights. Ooh. I honestly can't get over how amazing this game looks. The different settings and attention to detail were just so good. Anyone that appreciates good pixel art will definitely enjoy playing through this game. Is Blasphemous perfect? Well, not quite. While I really enjoyed the game, I did encounter a few little bugs here and there. Oh no! Wait a second. <laughs> okay, that makes this a little easier. Did I just hit the boss before the cutscene? Did that hurt him? <laughs> it sure did. Nice. All of these encounters were minor, and I'm sure they'll be patched in future updates, so it really didn't take away from my experience. And while the bosses are extremely cool to fight against and all of them looked really good, the difficulty felt balanced and gradually got more challenging as I progressed further in the game. Except for this lightning move. This move filled me with the nerd rage of a thousand suns as it stunlocked me into oblivion a couple of times. If you get hit by this move, well I hope your health wasn't low. There were also a few platforming areas that were a little frustrating to get through, but I can only blame myself for being impatient and dying a lot to get past them. And I think my one final gripe was that while there is fast travel and shortcuts in the game, certain areas were still a long trip to get to, even after unlocking all the travel options. But now I'm really nitpicking. Other than that, I thoroughly enjoyed my playthrough of the game, which took about 9 hours to beat. But that was just for the standard ending, and trust me, you're gonna want to unlock the true ending, which took me closer to 13 hours to play through. It's a little vague on how to do it, but all I'll say is when you get a specific key from the vendor, make sure to go back to the beginning of the game because I missed this until way later, and I was a little disappointed to realize my mistake and miss out on an important ability. Even after beating the game with the true ending, I really want to go back and finish the game with a 100% completion rate, which is extremely rare for me to want to do, and I think that's a testament to how good this game is. So after all this, should you buy Blasphemous? Most certainly. If you enjoy pixel art or 2D action platformers, this game is top quality in both of those areas, and it also carries an indie game price tag. I couldn't recommend it enough. And while I don't normally assign an arbitrary number score to a game, I'd most certainly give Blasphemous a 9 out of 10 and consider it as a contender for my game of the year. Go buy it, enjoy it, and you can thank me later. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and want to see more content like this, consider subscribing to my channel and maybe check out my narrative game series or other game reviews. I also want to shout out my newest patrons, Christopher Payet and Karlamka. Thank you both so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And a big, big thanks to all my patrons who are helping support this channel so I can make more reviews and narrative game series more often and eventually do this full time. I'm extremely grateful for your support. And as always guys, thanks for watching and until next time, have a good one.